Hey, everybody. Welcome to our college football show. I'm Chris Pugh. As always, i got with me Canton Repository sports writer Peter Holland. Peter, how are you today? <clears throat> What's going on, Chris? Sorry, been under the weather, man. So you, you might hear me cough a little bit. So I just, it's just been those past couple of days, man. But I'm oh, good. Yeah. How are you yeah, doing, Chris? No problem, man. Hey, it's it's the flu season and it's kind of rough. So I totally get that. So hey, uh, we didn't announce this beforehand, so I'm not sure how many live listeners we're going to have, but we're live on um, Twitter and Facebook. Um, if you have any questions, um, send them in. Uh, we'll try to see as uh, as many um, try to answer questions that come in as a as we can. So um, yeah, if you t- are tuning in, uh, tell us hi. That'd be great. Um, so uh, Peter, rough day here in Columbus and all of Ohio. Um, Ohio State thought this was the year after getting beat uh, last uh, season in Michigan, and my goodness, Peter, it wasn't. Uh, 45-23, Michigan over Ohio State. Um, kind of a lot of angry Ohio State fans. Um, Jim Harbaugh, who was kind of a punching bag for Ohio State for the longest time, let's say it like it is. He outcoached Ryan Day. I mean, they came up with a good strategy, uh, and they beat up on Ohio State. It was close to halftime, but they outscored Ohio State. I believe it was 28-3 to in the second half. So Michigan goes on to the Big Ten title game uh, to face Purdue. Ohio State is kind of hoping that maybe they can slip in the playoffs. What was your take from the game, Pierre? Um, well, for starters, I was on my way back from from my Thanksgiving break uh, during uh, during that Michigan Ohio State game, and I saw it was competitive for those first three quarters, and then things were still going backwards. You know, I was driving on my way back to Ken. I was keeping track. But yeah, it was pretty. It was not a pretty sight from the words of the Columbus people. What's going on? Um, I think is. I don't know if it's more. I think it's more of what Michigan has done right more than what Ohio State just went wrong. Michigan just showed it. They wanted it more. You know, in that fourth quarter. You know, um, even even with the absence of their running back Blake Corum, who went down, JJ McCarthy answered the call. And he played exquisitely well with 263 yards, three touchdowns. Um, so it was just an all-around great performance from him and also another player, um, his Blake Corum's backup, Donovan Edwards. He's only a sophomore, and he, he had 216 yards and two touchdowns. So everything just pretty much went right for Michigan more than what it went wrong for Ohio State. Well, in – you know, we and probably every other podcast that talks about college football, you look at a game like this and you say, man, Ohio State needs to stop the run, you know, for them to play well. Michigan heard that, too, because Michigan threw the ball a lot. And J.J. McCarthy hasn't thrown the ball a ton this season, but, man, he looked good for Michigan. I mean, you know, it took Ohio State off guard, and that really kind of sets the tone for the game. Uh, even after Blake um, – Cohen got hurt early on in the game. Uh, he didn't come back. And it was funny, once Ohio State tried to adjust to Michigan's pass the game, then the run game came. And, uh, you know, those two late, long touchdown runs really uh, sealed the game over. Um, So, yeah, Pierre, like I'm saying, Michigan just really – and it's funny because you would never think that you would say it in the past about Jim Harbaugh. But, you know, Harbaugh, I coached Ryan Day. I mean, I don't know what else to say, you know. Um, absolutely. You definitely got to get credit to Michigan's um, coaching staff for, um, um, for preparation, and especially how to, um, especially how to uh, adjust after losing Blake Corum. They still continue to rely on their other guys to so show that they have as much options as Ohio State has. So it was definitely a great um, adjustment and change up for them coaching staff and uh, it's going back to that sec they were a second half team that game you know outscoring them 28 to 3 in the second half alone yeah. you know it's it's great on the Michigan fans mix but this is where just now I'm just looking on Ohio State side just what went wrong this is where you really want this is the if you want to see CJ Shaw have that Heisman moment 
this would have been it. And we haven't really seen exactly what we would have hoped from C.J. Stroud to perform at the higher level that we expected him to be. You see J.J. McCarthy outplayed you. You see a backup running back outplayed you. You see the defense showing up to you. So, so it's not – and C.J. Stroud is a high prospect, and he's a great player. It's just – why have we not seen the best out of it? Yeah, he didn't have a terrible game. He had two picks late in the game. I think he was pressing and trying to get Ohio State back in because, you know, obviously I fell behind. Um, it was just a really weird game. I don't know if you noticed this. It seemed like a lot of Ohio State's passes, they would roll out C.J. Stroud one way. he threw it back across the field. So it was like a long completion, but it was like completely <laughs> side to side. And the Ohio State guy got tackled right away. So it was almost like, what's the point of what we're doing here? I mean, are, are they thinking maybe, you know, they get one on one matchup and Ohio State outruns the Michigan guy? But, you know, by the time Ohio State caught the ball, you know, the guy was tackled right away. It, I, I, you know, I don't know if that was a play call issue, if it was more of Stroud just wasn't throwing it to the right places. It's just a lot of weird things from that game, in my opinion. Yeah, this was probably an all-around bad game for Ohio State where we can pick a poison, pick apart who's to blame here or what went wrong. By the end of the day, it's more of a collective thing where the point that it, everything just didn't go right for Ohio State to the point that you lost to a more superior team in Michigan that rightfully so deserved to be in that playoff conversation are at least part of that. And now you just ask yourself of where do we stand with Ohio State if they still have a chance? Yeah, let's talk about it in a second. You know, the other thing I wanted to bring up real quick is, you, you know, Ohio State, they brought in a new defensive coordinator. You know, the guy was really trying to make things different this year. I thought they did a pretty good job over the season. It just, at the end, it just didn't, work out and I man what well, we can let, let's ask this takeaway Ryan Day I believe 45 and 5 I've, you know a 90 percent winning record coaches <laughs> don't, don't normally have that but as I was telling you last week people get ticked when you lose multiple games to Michigan I mean um you know coach has been fired at both schools for losing multiple games to the other uh place it seems a little overwhelming to say, okay, get rid of Ryan Day right now. He's not the answer. But you had two straight years where he was out coached. And Peter, you know, we'll talk in a second if Ohio State can still make the playoffs. But man, you get out coached, and these are two teams that could have won the national title. Um, and again, Ohio State, I mean, this is a premium coaching position. It's not like, you know, a, a smaller school where you say, hmm, who can we attract? Do you think Ryan Day should get another year? No. Ryan Day is – I don't see him getting fired at all. It's, he's doing fine. I mean, it happens. I mean, you're not going to get the result that you hope. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's not good to lose to Michigan back-to-back -back years, especially in your home turf. But that shit had to be a reason, though. <coughs> Excuse me. That shit had to be a reason to fire him especially that you've been in the playoff contentions every year. You've competed for the Big Ten Championship. You continue to produce NFL talent. It's not It's not to a point that just because you lose to your rivalry back-to-back -back years, that's just really not the way how you handle things. Now you're just going – now you're just firing someone out of an emotion more than just what makes sense. Firing Ryan Day over a loss to your rival doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Let me throw a couple names out at you. Um, Urban Meyer. Now, you know, people were angry at the end of the game. Uh, Urban was there with the Fox pregame show. Um, after the game, you know, they had some segments where they were talking about the game. People in the back were chanting, Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer. Uh, Urban Meyer did well for Ohio State, but then, you know, he had a really – just disturbing coaching uh, tenure with uh, Jacksonville before he got let go there. I I don't know, man. Uh, 
would Urban Meyer make sense? No. Who would you pick, no. Urban Meyer or Ryan Day? No. I'm not bringing Urban Meyer back in in Ohio State. You forgot all these crazy stories about Urban Meyer when he was a coach at Ohio State. People, right. Players already spoke out about him and his, well, you, how do you say, his dictatorship and how he treats his players. With all that baggage, no, there's no going back after that. Stick with Ryan Day, continue to build his way. It's going to all come up soon. Eventually, if he doesn't live up the expectations, I'm sure there'll be other options. But Ryan Day is doing fine where you shouldn't have to look at other alternatives, especially Urban Meyer. I would keep okay. him away from that Ohio State football program. Two other names, and again, this is all wild speculation. I mean, there's not anything definite. Uh, Mike Rabel was a uh, linebacker for Ohio State, did well, obviously, before he became a, a very solid linebacker with the Patriots. Uh, Rabel had a coaching uh, tenure on the defensive side with Ohio State. He got hired away, uh, I believe, went back to New England first. Now he's a good coach for the Tennessee Titans. And Mike Vrabel. Chris, I, don't Chris, I don't even know why you're entertaining this. Why okay. are you entertaining this Ryan Day fire thing? Ryan well, Day is a sports not talk, man. Fired. Okay. I guess it's a sports talk, but what are we doing here? Right? Day's okay. not being fired at all. <laughs> Here's a wild card name. And, you know, maybe we could briefly talk about this because, you know, we're Ohioan and this is Ohio school too. Um, University of Cincinnati, Luke Fickle left. Uh, he's now the head coach for Wisconsin. Um, some reports tonight. Deion Sanders says, hey, I'm going to pick one of three schools. Cincinnati is one of the schools, so maybe he goes to Cincinnati. The other name that reportedly is being interviewed at Cincinnati is the great Brian Hartline. Uh, you know, Brian Hartline was a receiver for Ohio State. Um, I don't know if he's ready to become the head coach for Ohio State. But uh, Hartline, uh, you know, is an offensive assistant. I don't, I don't even believe he's the offensive coordinator. But, you know, he's recruited a ton of great receivers to come to Ohio State. Yeah. Brian um, Hartline. I think, I think he's a wide receiver. He's been a wide receivers coach with Ohio State. I think he hasn't really stepped up in an offensive coordinator job yet. But, um, but he will definitely be a wild card as far as – Coaches who are in need of Brian Hartline's service, um, just because, it's like you said, that guy can recruit the hell out of the players. You know, he can get guys to come to come to Ohio State. He's been getting all those top tier talents from across the board, especially all the local kids. I I even encountered Brian Hartline a couple camps when he came to Maxwell, and he was just looking at some guys, and he will be talking to some of these players and just give his evaluation in person. So, yeah, it's Brian Hurtline getting head coaching jobs. not ideal, but at the same time, if you want to build someone from the ground up, why not get a, a young up-and-coming guy who at least knows how to recruit? And that's kind of half the job. If you can get the right. best of the best players coming from anywhere, especially from your, the best players on your state, that's – half the battle and now it's just can you develop and build around it and turn to a building program so I could definitely see Brian Harlight get some head coaching um, gigs or at least some get some interest um, but it goes back to your um, question is he ready to be right. to take over to the program and that's something that we won't know until we actually see it well, I don't think he's ready to become the Ohio State head coach. Like, I don't think he dropped Ryan Day for Brian Hartline. I, I will say Hartline could go to Cincinnati. I mean, if Dion decides to go somewhere else. But, man, you might need to make Hartline a coordinator pretty soon to keep him there. Because I know Hartline loves Ohio State. That's his school. But, man, if you're a wide receiver coach, that's like, you know, you're a sports writer at the repository. That would be like, hey, if you could become editor of a similar paper, would you do that rather than just being a sports writer? Who knows? You know, that's a, a big question. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, real quick about UC, uh, it was tough to lose a guy like Luke Fickle. I know the players like one of the assistants. Man, I think Deion Sanders 
could bring in recruits. I think he could probably bring in part of the Jackson State team that he's uh, coached very well at. I think he can get other guys to come. I mean, I think Dion would be a name choice for UC. I don't see what the issue would be if he he wants to go to UC. Do you? Um, it's just a matter of does he fit what they are looking for, you know, and does Deion Sanders see himself in Cincinnati? So one can mean the other. So it's not completely ideal, but I don't know if that's a fit for him. Um, I even I don't. It also wouldn't surprise me if Cincinnati decided to keep it in house. You know, yeah. um, I was just I was just looking at Keith Jenkins, um, his tweet earlier, and he will he get text messages and phone calls from his sources telling him they they want to keep their uh, they want to keep Fickle's offensive coordinator, um, Gino Good Good I can't even pronounce his name. Goodigly, I think is his, that's how you pronounce it, because um, he's a former Bearcat for quarterback and he's been their OC. So, if you want to keep someone or at least elevate a person, I think he would have been the he would be the perfect person, and you can start. And this would also be a time for Cincinnati to start over and build the Bearcat from the ground up. And why not get it from a guy who who knows that organ who knows that program inside and out. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I think even for UC, Dion would be a wild card choice. Um, I think he's kind of a boomer bust type of guy. I mean, he's done a lot of great stuff at Jackson State. He's had some controversies with a private school that he ran that I think has scared some of the Power Five schools off. But you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say Dion should be the head coach of Ohio State. But man, for UC, why not? You know, uh, I mean, I. I think he's got a better chance of pulling recruits. I don't know. I mean, I think there's some uh, merit to that. Um, who knows? But, yeah, tough for UC. Uh, Luke Fickle did a really good job for um, UC. It'll be interesting to see what he does for Wisconsin um, as well. Um, I read something. Uh, it, it was interesting, uh, Peter. Um, Spencer Rattler. Uh, if you remember, a couple years ago, he was supposed to be the next best quarterback for Oklahoma. He had a rough year. He transferred to South Carolina this year. Uh, they had a big upset the other week against Tennessee. Rattler's transferring again from my hear. Did you hear about that? Oh, no. I, I did not see that. Really? Uh, his coordinator is going to Nebraska to be with the new head coach there. And they're saying he wants to go for his coordinator. So he could be Nebraska's starting quarterback next year. Oh, that's that's kind of a surprise there. Um, I, I saw a report. I'm not sure if it's confirmed or not, but that was a report that was out there. Uh, well, hypothetically speaking, is that the case? If he wants to follow and follow with his OC, uh, what is his name, Marcus Shattersfield, his OC, if he wants to follow in that trail, I mean, I, I don't know. If he... If he end up going to Nebraska, I mean, they have quarterbacks that it is. Um, he might be the best candidate for that, but what does it mean for the other quarterbacks that are there now, like Casey yeah. Thompson and those guys? So that's going to be quite the um, kind of that's going to be quite um, a competition area if Casey chooses to stay. But then also for Spencer Rattler, I'm sure the NFL scouts are going to be looking at him, and I'm I'm so and I'm actually kind of surprised he would. I was actually kind of surprised that he would prefer to transfer than enter the NFL draft. You know, yeah, you know, he's man. eligible. He's eligible, and I'm sure that scouts has been eyeing on him. I don't know where exactly he ranks among other quarterbacks, but I thought that would make more better sense for his alley after what he, after his, after finishing very strong um, this season, beating Tennessee and um, and uh, getting through the rest of the season, even beating Clemson. So I think what probably makes better sense is rather just enter the draft and see how high you can go instead of just continue to bounce around school to school because I'm sure scouts don't even like looking at that because now they just make one question about your loyalty. So yeah, has a college football. Be, so. 
college football has changed where you very rarely would have transfers and now it's like free agency. You know what I mean? <laughs> I gotta sign a one year contract with you. If I'm not happy, I'll just go somewhere else. It's it's very different how it's changed. All right. Well, let's talk about this weekend's game. So Ohio State since they lost, they're not going to the Big Ten title game. Uh, but they're ranked fifth. I thought they were going to dr- drop a little further, uh, but they're still in the mix. And there's some talk saying, hey, they can still make the playoffs. So let's look at the other top four games. And, Pierre, let's see who we think is going to win. Uh, first of all, uh, well, let's start with number four. Uh, USC overtook Ohio State to be number four. Um, they are playing against Utah Friday night football. Pierre, how about that? Uh, winner wins the Pac-12 title. Um, Utah actually beat USC earlier this year, I, th- I believe, by a point, and that was USC's only loss. Uh, what do you think, Pierre? You think USC wins, or you think Utah might pull off the upside again? That's a good question. Um, I think USC can pull it off. You know, I'm sure that's been stuck in their minds that the team that they lost to is now you're going to have the faith in the Pac-12 championship. I'm sure there's going to be. Definitely an emotional battle, but you can also say that USC has gotten better after that loss. Um, so, so I could definitely see USC winning that game, and um, it's gonna also gonna come down to the hands of Caleb Williams, who's like going to win the Heisman this year. So, I definitely see USC beating Utah and see if they can solidify that final playoff spot. Yeah, Caleb Williams is playing very well as of late. Um, I would tend to say USC wins that game. Uh, maybe not going away, but I still think they win this one. Um, another interesting game, uh, TCU, who is currently ranked third, um, they play against Kansas State. Uh, now Kansas State's ranked 10th. They're 9-3. I think Kansas State has a shot. Um, I, I think Kansas State is going to give TCU a definite run for their money. Um, I think it's going to be super close. Uh, just Kent State got a lot of weapons all around them with Adrian Martinez and Deuce Vaughn, and so does TCU. And Max, I'm a huge Max Duggan guy. I love the way he he throws the football. I just and I just love that TCU just continues to find way to win ball games, even at a tight, even at tight moments. You know, I still can't get over that TCU Baylor game where. Matt, where, where um, it's only like a few seconds left, they sprint down to the sidelines and get the field goal in, and they won, and they won by a field goal. Ain't no telling what this TCU team could be capable of. So I'm going to stick with TCU. Um, yeah, <laughs> TCU. It never looks pretty, but TCU keeps winning. It's just kind of strange. Um, the Big Ten title game. Uh, real quick, yeah, because we got to get into our show before long. But, man, I hate how the Big Ten has the divisions. Have the top two teams play against each other. Uh, but since the Big Ten insists on having divisions, we've got Michigan, number two, against unranked Purdue. I, Michigan wins going away. Uh, maybe not by as many as they beat Iowa in in last year's Big Ten title game. But I, Michigan wins this game. Would you agree? You sure, Chris? You don't you don't think Purdue is gonna give him a fight? Ah, uh, man, Michigan wins with two touchdowns. Stick to it. Okay, I got Michigan winning, but I don't think Purdue is not gonna be the type of team that's gonna get blown out. I mean, okay, Purdue's, Purdue's been competitive, you know, okay. and they got they got some fair chair and talent as well, and they got a really good quarterback themselves. Um, what his name? Adrian O'Connell is his name. So, I wouldn't say that it's going to be an easy victory for Michigan, uh, but don't sleep on Purdue now. So, it's going to be a lot competitive than what you think. So, Okay. Um, Our number one team, uh, Georgia, Uh, they are going up against, I I believe it's LSU, right? Yeah, LSU Mm -hmm. 9-3. Um, uh, they lost last week. Uh, what do you think LSU could beat Georgia? Can LSU beat Georgia? Um, 
if they didn't beat Alabama, Georgia would have beat them the LSU easily. But now I'm having second thoughts after LSU lost to what did they lost to Texas A and M in the last in their um, final week. So I don't know what to expect. Um, so LSU is probably going to be the type of team where if they're not going to get in, at least they can, at least they can try to make an effort to ruin someone else's chances. And why not take out the reigning champs? And then Georgia, you know, even if they lose, I mean, Georgia is still going to find a way to stay in. But um, I think Georgia is still um, a better team. I think they go into they're going to get the win. I think it's going to be a, a really strong defensive game, but I think Georgia gets the win. Yeah, I think Georgia maybe by seven, maybe ten points, somewhere around there. Um, so we're calling the top four teams uh, to win. Now, in theory, we say, hey, if the top four teams win, that should be your playoffs. Uh, ESPN earlier this week, and I don't see it on their website now, but they had this feature where – you can pick different winners of these games. You can say, what happens if Purdue wins or whatever else the case might be? I put in the top four teams winning a couple times. They still gave Ohio State a better than 50% chance of leapfrogging where the um, committee would say, hey, maybe Ohio State's a better choice. Let's put Ohio State in there. Um, Peter, it seems to me that Ohio State's in if one – if one of these four schools lose, do you think Ohio State has a chance of being in if none of the four schools lose and everything stays true to form? The only chance Ohio State is going to get in if TCU or USC lose in their championship game. Um, so that's probably the best chance for Ohio State right now, um, being that they're on one last team. They went all the way into that Michigan the Michigan game to um to lose. So they have probably a stronger chance of getting in the top four um if one of the four teams loses. Um and it is it really has to depend on TCU and Ohio State and only TCU and USC. Or if it happens to hypothetically if if both those two team loses in the championship, where do you put Alabama? Because Alabama is right there too. Fortunately Unfortunately, the committee they just can't they just cannot turn away Alabama. And Alabama somehow, some way, somehow gets in the conversation. So, if there's a possible chance if two of the four teams in it in the playoff loses, where oh I I never see Ohio State getting in, but then how far does you Alabama goes? Yeah, it's it's hard to have a two loss team in there, but man, Peter, Ohio State got beat. I mean, it's one thing if they lost like a classic by a point, but man, Ohio State got beat pretty hard. So, hey, I'm I'm looking at the time. Uh, we have another show we got to do <laughs> on the NFL, so <laughs> let's close this up. Uh, be interested to see what happens. Uh, Peter and I will be back next week uh, to kind of go over what happened in these weekend games and. See if we agree with what the playoffs are. Uh, it's an inexact science picking those top four teams for the playoffs. Obviously, uh, they want to try to put the best four teams in, but sometimes biases come in. Like, honestly, would Ohio State would get better ratings than TCU. So how do you sneak Ohio State in past TCU? I mean, that's something that the committee does think about. It sounds unfair, but. That's where they're at. So it'd be interesting to see uh, what decisions end up getting uh, made. Uh, so, Peter, thanks so much. Uh, we are going to talk um, live uh, in the next few minutes as we talk about the NFL. So um, thanks, Peter. Uh, this is Chris. Have a great day, everybody. Hi, I'm Jennifer Mooney. Welcome to what is our new Hope Interrupted podcast based on the work from our book, Hope Interrupted, that I co-authored with my good friend, Byron McCauley. Hey, Jennifer. You know, I'm looking forward to this podcast as much as I was look, looking forward to writing this book with you. We hope to interview some uh, high-impact folks as well as have a little fun. We're going to cover stories of hope. To learn more about our podcast and our book, please visit www.hopeinterrupted.com.